police shortage all across the country, all around the world. It's happening for many different reasons, but for whatever the reason, it doesn't really matter. You need to be your, your own first responder. You need to be able to take care of yourself and your family. And one of those categories of taking care of your family, being your own first responder, is having some self-defense tools. Now, there's one obvious self-defense tool that we're not going to talk about in this video, and that's because I don't cover those things on this channel. That's something that I personally have with me all the time, every day, I have it with me now, but I don't talk about this. So you can get that out of the way if you wanna put that in the comment, if that's your choice, that's great. But I also say, even if you do carry something like this, you should also have the ability to defend yourself with many other tools. And the first tool is right here. It's that situation awareness, paying attention to what's happening, that ability to defend yourself, to know what's happening, to be able to respond to it with a palm strike or an elbow strike, with being able to get out of the way, if you can get out of the way, get out of there, run, hide, fight. But when it's time to fight, how do you defend yourself? So we have uh, punches, kicks, palm strikes, elbows, knees, feet. Good afternoon, everybody. W9UFO, it's good to see you. Um, gaming channel's here, it's good to see you, gaming channel. But I'm gonna talk about other self-defense tools in addition to the ones that you have with you all the time that you can leverage. So how do you increase the power of your strikes? And that's by carrying certain self-defense tools. Hello, Catherine, it's good to see you. So I'm gonna start with the smallest and then we're gonna go larger. And you can pick an assortment of these if it works for you, or if not, if you don't see the one that you carry or that you prefer, then put that in the comment section below. This is by no means, I think anything and everything can be a self-defense tool. I can use this remote to the television here. It's nice and heavy, the battery's in this side, I can hold it and I can stick it in somebody's face for self-defense. Good afternoon, Matthew Lugo. Lugo's here from Ireland. One of the self-defense tools we're gonna talk about comes from the beautiful Emerald Isle. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But we're starting small to large. And the first one here is this pepper spray. Pepper spray, some people carry bear spray now, mace, whatever you wanna call it. Good afternoon, Ian. Um, Alita, good to see you. But this is super simple. You flip that over and it's point and shoot, right? But you have to remember one of the things that will happen with this is that if it's going to the threat and you're defending yourself, with the pepper spray or the mace, then you have to expect that a lot of it is gonna come blow back on you, or if he closes that distance, you might be wrestling around with somebody that you just pepper sprayed, hello Patrick, and now you're eating it, it's in your eyes, it's in your nose, your snot's coming out, you can't catch your breath, but that's the whole purpose, it burns, it hurts. This is a uh, self-defense tool that is supposed to be able to create distance between you and the threat, but if you ask any law enforcement person, they use these very rarely because they know when they pull their can out, their can is a lot bigger and they spray somebody with it. They're now going to be wrestling and fighting with somebody who's covered in this. So understand that you can carry this. Uh, my wife has this. I stuck it on her key ring. A lot of people that I train with carry these. I, I recommend it, but understand how and when to use it and make sure you um, check the expiration date on these because these do expire and you can go to flip it and spray it and it doesn't work. But that's the first one on our list. These are all uh, responding to the police shortages that are real. I read something about Austin City, a huge police shortage. The, the head of the police just resigned, but then in the school department, the schools, the public schools in Austin, they don't have enough law enforcement to protect their own schools, which I think is a disgrace. And hopefully those citizens will rise up and correct that soon. But those are, that, that's for a political channel. We're not talking about politics. Anyway, moving on. Past the pepper spray, my second choice is for something I carry, and I carry one of these in the car next to me. It has a window breaker on one side. It's a little bit stronger than this. But this is just a Uwara palm stick. These are popular in Okinawan and uh, Japanese martial arts. Just a palm stick. You also find versions in Korean and Chinese martial arts, other martial arts. But it's just like holding a roll of quarters. That's the American version, right? Holding a roll of quarters allows you to hit without compressing your fingers, and it's a weighted punch. It's a hard, much harder punch. You hit somebody like that, you're gonna break a jaw for self-defense. You can hold it here, get this other hand up, defend yourself, and then strike with that just in your knuckles like that. You can also pull it here. Darius, it's good to see you. Darius is in Poland. I'm gonna swing this here. I can stick it into his ear, into his jaw, into his neck for self-defense. I can come down over the top. I can bring this here, stick it into his stomach. You can go over and under the same way you would use something like this called the scissors or the sewing machine style, but you can do all of that with one of these. And this is not designed to puncture the skin. It's designed to be a force multiplier. So it takes the power of your body and it makes your strikes a lot harder and more effective 
because you have this here. Yeah, Darius says by bear spray, it's stronger. Bear spray is effective. Uh, you can go over and under, but again, with, even with bear spray, you spray him with bear spray, that bear spray is gonna be on you pretty soon, so make sure you're ready for that. When I was in the military and we would train hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then when I was a military policeman and we would train uh, apprehension, putting somebody in handcuffs and taking them to the ground, they would often spray us with the pepper spray so that you could learn how to fight through it because you're not gonna be able to see very well, you're not gonna be able to breathe very well, the snot's gonna literally just pour like big strings out of your nose, you're gonna be coughing up phlegm because it's gonna get back there and it's gonna cause all this irritation. And when you spray somebody, whether it's bear spray, pepper spray, wasp spray, you're gonna be eating it too, so remember that. Now this is the next, it's a version of the Yuara called the Kubatan. Uh, uh, Mr. Kubota came up with this idea. It's based on the Yuara palm stick. And you just hold it here. You can have your keys coming off the end. It becomes a distracting or slashing weapon. You can do all the same things you can with that last one. It's just a weighted um, resistance here in your hands. So it makes it hurt a lot more. Yeah, William said he served as a Marine field MP. I was also a Marine uh, military policeman. Patrick, good to see you. Smashing here, coming down over the top, all the same strikes that you do with the other one. Also, these were used, Mr. Kubota used to teach a lot of come along techniques behind the nose or under the nose and the mandibular joint, pressing in here, stick it here and push down. So there's some things that you can do that. Yeah, Goku-san says, uh, don't just watch, please like and subscribe. Thank you for that. I never say that, just uh, if you like it, you'll uh, hopefully put a thumbs up, hopefully you'll subscribe. And if you don't, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. I appreciate you just watching and being here. All right, now, this one kind of crosses two categories because it starts small and you have to make sure this is legal wherever you are. This comes usually in a nice um, case like this. I'll show you. And I have this in my bug out bag in my car. Hello, Toby. Good to see you. Uh, the Seven Sons, good to see you. Alita, nice to see you again. This also will go on web gear or black gear. Some police officers call it black gear. Some it's called web gear. And it goes on a belt. Or you can stick this inside like me uh, this is inside my uh, get home bag so i have a bag in the back of my truck if something happens the roads are impassable i can grab my bag and i can huff it uh, beat feet and make it to the house to protect my family or wherever my family might might be if i know where they are and you should always have this is part of uh, the police shortage being your own first responder and i'm going to make a video about that in a little bit more detail talking about the medicine talking about the other things you can be prepared for um yeah, Darius says, you better get out of there. If you spray him, you better retreat. But I have this in my bag. It's attached. I have it through a strap in there so that I can pull open it here and pull it out. And then when you snap down like that, you have a much longer tool. And the purpose of having a longer tool, which we're going to go into next, is that gives you reach advantage over one of these. And, and I carry these all the time. Someone asked me yesterday, why do you always have the blade on you? And I say, because I never know when something needs to get cut. And I was thinking something else too, but I, I never know when something needs to get cut and I use this all day long. So having a blade is just a, a, a tool of efficiency, but it also could be a self-defense weapon. You can see this is a nice sized blade and this gives me reach advantage. So I can keep, he can have his knife here. I can smash through that hand. You can strike coming into the temple, into the jaw. The way you use one of these is you always stay behind it. You can even put two hands on it, come in smashing this way. You can bring the backside down. You can bring it down over the top. You have horizontal strikes, high, low, going for the knees or the thighs coming up. You have those vertical strikes coming down. You even have vertical strikes coming up and then all of your diagonal strikes. And that's basic, super simple how you use one of these. I also like this backside. I keep a little um, coming out of the pinky side so I can stick that somewhere if I need to for self-defense. And then moving up, this is the Japanese Okinawan Tanbo. This is also popular, Japanese Okinawan styles that use weapons. And it's just an 18 inch stick. It's not as long as my extended, um, baton. This is a collapsible baton. This is the friction style where it doesn't have the push button. You can get them all kinds of ways. Now some are springed at the end, you know, so it's a little bit more flexible. It's more like a whip. This is just a dowel rod that you get at your do it yourself store. That's why I like it the most. You can get one of these. You can cut it in half. 
sand it really well, oil it for two or three days, let it soak in the oil and, you know, either boil linseed oil. I prefer the um, butcher block oil. And then you have a tool that you can use for self-defense. When there's a police shortage, you have to be your own first responder and you have to defend yourself. This is still gonna be longer than that blade. And it's going to allow me to do two-handed strikes, two-handed strikes this way, just like a rifle butt attack. I can stick it this way. I can also use it as an Irish, for Irish stick fighting, sort of like the longer shillelagh. By twisting the wrist like that, the uh, Koreans will drill a hole right through here. Hello, Vinyesh, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Garen, nice to see you again. Drill a hole in there, and you put a piece of string or a piece of thin leather through there. You put your thumb in the loop, and then it wraps around your wrist. And then if you've ever seen Korean style, especially the Hapkido guys, they'll whip it around and it comes back into the hand, and they can use it outside as a longer weapon too almost like the second half of a pair of nunchucks, and then it snaps back this way, and you have a simple self-defense stick. These are extremely effective, and it looks less and less like a weapon, and more like, you know, you can tell them that you, you're a baker, this is your rolling pin, you tell them it's a drumstick, I don't care what you tell them, tell them it's none of their business, and then you just throw this again in a bag in your car and have a self-defense tool. Just make sure that you use common sense where you put things, especially if you have, if you're, if you're in your car and you have self-defense tools within hand's reach, police officers, depending on the state and the jurisdiction you live in, they can charge you with having a concealed weapon or whatever. So you have to know the laws of your state. And I am not a lawyer. I do not pretend to give any legal advice. So do your own research, keep yourself safe. But when there's a police shortage and you need to carry your own self-defense tools, as we go longer, this is a hickory and this is made by Cane Masters. There's a link below for all the Cane Masters products. Um, but this is their Escrima stick or Collie stick, our knee stick, and it's hickory. So it's not like the rattan grass ones that the Filipino martial arts stylists use. This one is gonna hit a lot harder. And you use it the same way you would the baton. And then you'll see, it's just a little bit longer. Here we go, a little bit longer than that baton. This has some notches there. These notches will keep it in your hand, keep it from coming out. If you turn it around to this side, these notches are going to pull the skin off of somebody a little bit. G. Carlton, good to see you. Uh, so I can't read all the comments, but I appreciate you guys putting them there. Thank you, Alita, for that uh, super chat. But from this one, you have these basic angles coming down. Filipino style teachers going to the head and follow. You have both follow through and then you have out and back. But you follow through, you have angles down into the wrists, into the ribs, into the knees, you can go low, and then you have your angles coming up. And again, your head, maybe he's reaching out, he's got that knife in his hand, you're gonna smash and break, and this is gonna break bones. This is gonna comp compress the flesh, and it, this is way harder, and it's gonna go in and shatter bones for self-defense. And so you have your angular strikes, you have your horizontal strikes, you have your vertical strikes down, and then up again, and then the way I like to use it is as a two-handed tool for self-defense, bend the knees, thrusting, just like the old police riot baton, they would get online, still do, they still use it. I saw it in the riots in France recently. They're using side handle batons and straight batons. Um, but it's just as simple, you get lower than the other person for self-defense and you stick that right in the middle of their body coming up and push them off. When you have to be your own first responder because there's a police shortage and carry your own self-defense tools, the collie or a stick is a good option. And these often come in a pair. You can learn how to fight with two at once and do all kinds of different techniques or learn how to just fight with the one. And even if you don't have your sticks with you, you can learn how to fight with sticks, practice with sticks, with all the videos that I have. That's a good reason to subscribe because I drop these videos on how to use all these different tools every week and then learn how to use the tool and then you might not have it with you, but you're always gonna have your skill of stick fighting with you. And this, these are all basically sticks except for the pepper spray, obviously. Now, moving up in length, we have the walking stick, the homemade walking stick, and the walking cane. I'm gonna show you the features real quick. The thing I like the best about the homemade walking stick is I made it, you can make your own. I can send you one if you want, but this is extremely heavy. I soaked this thing for four days in oil, and I found a new method of soaking it, and I cannot tell you, it just feels like ironwood almost. For those of you who are familiar with ironwood, this thing is so hard now, so flexible, it's hard to break. 
And it's just, it's a dowel rod. You pick one of these up for less than uh, 50, they're like 12 bucks now, the price keeps going up. Everything keeps going up. But for about $15 worth of materials or less, you can have a self-defense tool that gives you great reach advantage. You can use it almost like a sword. You can use it like it's designed, the Japanese style, where you're twisting and you're switching hands. You have all of these different types of strikes or you can just hold on to it and smash boxes ears with it, come in like a rifle bayonet attack or a rifle butter stri uh, strike. Hello, Doug. Basic homemade self-defense tool. And then moving into the walking stick, and there are a lot of different styles of walking stick. This one, Doug, who just came on, it was actually a gift from Doug. All my shillelaghs are from Doug. This is a beautiful version of a walking stick that looks nice. You can take this onto the planes. You can take it pretty much everywhere you go. And it has this knob at the end, that big old fist, right? That's like a big fist, and you stick that from here. The proper way, you would be standing with it in your hand. The threat would come up, you get your other hand up, always put this hand up, back up, you're too close, give a verbal command, then you might bend your knee, and then come up with this first strike here, or bringing it across here, hitting with the hard part, bringing it in two hands here, smashing down on top, kind of like a hatchet, bring it in this way, thrusting into the face for self-defense, or using it like that Irish stick fighting style where you're twisting, you're smashing, use this hand to bounce it off of, to turn, to strike, to come over the top, and all the same basic strikes, basic angles, just think in terms of diagonals, think in terms of horizontal, straight down, and then twisting the wrist and allowing the power in the weight of the stick to do the rest of the work. That hard knot against someone's jaw or someone's neck is gonna be very effective. Yeah, Alejandro says, likes to keep a 14 inch rebar in your pocket. It's very effective. Rebar, of course, is, is thick, thick, heavy metal. Um, yeah, Garen says, ouch. <laughs> so twisting this way, twisting this way. Lots of ways that you can use this one. You can also use it to block somebody else's weapon. Just put it along there and let that take the, the brunt of the strike instead of your skin. Get behind it. Hello, Sensei Amit. Good to see you. Sensei Amit's just in time. Sensei Amit is also in Ireland, like Lugo, and is very familiar with Irish stick fighting, which is where this comes from. Now, getting back to the same length, these are all 36 inches of give or take, and that's about the length of a walking stick or a walking cane, depending on your height. If you're a little bit shorter, it might be, you can cut the ends off, make it a little bit shorter, but the basic idea is that your wrist would have a break in it, um, right as your wrist breaks, meaning bends, right where your wrist bends, about that would be the length of your walking cane. If you're taller, of course, you can have these, especially these cane masters, there's a link below to a rattan cane or to these cane master canes. These can be made in any size that you want. Now, the nice thing about this one, and these are a little bit more expensive, you can get them very inexpensive with less features, but this one has the paracord to keep your hand on it, also a great option if you are your own first responder and you need to take this cord off and use it to, uh, for first aid or anything else to build something, you've got that as an option. It's also gonna keep it in your hand better if there are fluids on your hands, you're sweaty, it's raining, there might be blood involved for self-defense, that's gonna keep it in your hand. This option here, having this ridge here, this teardrop shape, you can see it from the, when I take the end off from the side, Kind of a teardrop it's more of a diamond in my mind but we call it a teardrop but that allows you to compress the flesh uh faster yeah this is like a boken darius says and break i mean this and this again this is going to break bones very quickly very easily and you use this one the same way you would those collie sticks or screaming sticks or sword you use this like a boken use it as a two-hand thrusting striking you can change the grip you can snap it up under his body, bring it down on top. You can bring it across this way, kind of like a side handle baton. You can pop it up here, smash that in his face, turn that, stick that little tooth right there, right into his eye, rip it out of his face for self-defense or into his jaw or his nose, pull his teeth literally out of his mouth for self-defense, and then pushing this way. Yeah, since Amit says he likes the thorn grip. I do like the thorn grip too. It gives you something to really, really hold on to. Uh, this one's not octagonal, but you can get it made octagonally. And then as we go taller, then there are so many things that you can do with this too. You could re reach out, grab somebody, pull them in, smash the elbow 
into his face for self-defense, but it's very effective. And then, let's see if we can get that to hang there. The Joe, one of my favorite of all, all uh, time, the Japanese Joe or Okinawan Joe is the middle size staff. They're generally like 50 to 54 inches. Again, it depends on your height, but you want to have a, uh, the elbow kind of at a 90 degree angle if you're, as if you're walking down the street. And that's kind of how you measure it. Another way to measure it is that it should come up to about your armpit. So that's the Joe. The bow is the one that comes up, up either to the sides of your head or a little bit higher, usually 72 inches, about six feet. This one is shorter, but this one's very versatile. You can just thrust this straight into his face. You can twist and bring this up across the face. You can bring it back this way. There's all kinds of spinning that can be done with this, changing your grip, thrusting in this way here, boxing the ears, pushing in here. You can bring it up from here, bring it up under his, his chin, smash him here. Maybe he's reaching with that knife. Smash him here, sweep the legs, thrust in here. This one can be used as a... Um, traditional style martial arts staff where you're changing your hands and you're doing all of these fancy blocks and steps and turns. Again, I've got videos on that if you want to learn how to use all those, but you can also just keep it simple, carry it like this, turn your hand over, strike, punch down over the top and keep it super simple and it's very effective for self-defense. Now, along those same lines, not as long, but another Shalala, again, this is from Doug. Thank you, Doug. This, yeah, since Amit has a new book out, for all those of you who are interested in martial arts and self-defense in any way, if, and you like to read, his book is on Kindle. Um, I haven't ordered it yet, but it's in my cart. I put it in the cart. So next time I get to a computer, I'm just insanely busy these days, but I will order that book. And if you guys don't know uh, about Sensei Amit's book, it's Emmett Doyle. Go look it up. He's on Amazon. You can download it and learn a much much more about the history of martial arts. So this big nasty knot, sticking that through his teeth or his face. And this, this looks more like a hiking stick. You can even use a trekking pole or a hiking stick this length. So it's not as long as the Joe or tall as the Joe. It's not as short as the walking stick. It's somewhere in the middle and extremely effective. This one's very heavy. That's almost like a war club. And all of these, again, going back to where we started, almost all of them except for the shortest ones, the Kubaton, the Yuwara palm stick, they all have significant reach advantage over somebody with a blade. You don't want to go hand to hand. If it's hand to blade, you're going to lose, uh, you're, or you're at least going to get cut, um, stabbed, and possibly lose your life. And, I, and there's no guarantee that you won't with one of these when you're your own first responder and there's a police shortage and you have to carry a self-defense tool. But if you do use one of these, you are going to have an advantage. Try to keep him back and try to hit him before he hits you if he's got something that could possibly you know uh, injure you that badly or take your life and this and that's this is all for self-defense none of this stuff is for street fighting or bar fights or beefing or road rage if that's your problem you need counseling you need to learn how to control your temper you need to learn how to breathe <sighs> do some qigong or qigong whatever you want to call it learn how to calm your mind do some meditation do some prayer for me i spend my time in prayer these days um, but when you have to defend yourself, something like this. Yeah, Garen says training and practice is key too. The more you train, the greater your confidence is, the more you start to understand how your body moves in space and time. You get spatial awareness, you get timing and distance. All of that comes from training. Your strikes get faster, stronger. I was thinking about that this morning. There's just no difference between somebody who's been trained to defend themselves and somebody who hasn't. Somebody who hasn't might have a lot of experience in fighting, but even somebody who has experience in fighting and training, they're gonna be far superior. And, and it's all gonna come up here too. You have to be prepared mentally. And one of the best books that you can get on that mental preparation, the mental part of self-defense, more important than any of the physical techniques, is when violence is the an answer, I'll put the link below, when violence is the answer by Tim Larkin, read that book and you're gonna learn so much, you're gonna feel so much more confident about your ability to, uh, to defend yourself and as we talk about police shortages and all the craziness in the world, it reminds me that having a faith, having a relationship with my creator gives me a lot more peace and understanding what's going on right now. So if that's something you're struggling with and you want my two cents on it, I'm not going to put it here, but you can reach out and I would love to share that with you. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. Thanks for being here. Self-defense is a God-given right, as Alita says. 
and defend yourself, defend yourself, defend your family, defend your freedom, defend your um, safety, defend your, your ability to speak your mind. We, we, all, we have all these freedoms that we're in jeopardy of losing if we don't all start to take, uh, take, a, take action, right? Take action in simple ways. And I did see the, the thing about the rat fight book. Um, I can't think of his name. He, he's been around forever. I remember his stuff way back when in the back of the Black Belt magazine and can't think of his name, but um, I have seen all that stuff. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Kilo Romeo Delta, thank you for that. Good to see you. And yeah, as Doug says, a good fighter, usually not a good uh, spare. <laughs> You're, that's true. Catherine, thank you very much. Vinesh, good to see you. Yeah, uh, practice your boxing every day. Get in a good stance. Learn how to bend your knees. Learn how to tuck your chin. Learn how to get your hands up and your elbows in. Throw a couple punches. Step over. Learn how to move right and left. Learn some bo basic boxing moves. How to move your head with your body. How to slip and weave. How to throw some elbows, some palm strikes, even a headbutt if you have to, if it's life or death. But practice your self-defense daily, even if it's just five minutes at a time, it really adds up and you're going to get so far from where you start if you just do a little bit every day. Uh, Troy, good. Uh, Troy's asking, oh, yeah, Paul Vunak. Thank you for that, um, Garen. That's the name of the rat fighting guy. Um, yeah, basic comments. It's like, uh, what's that other? Krav Maga. It's, it's like, you know, a, an amalgamation of things with a little bit of common sense and moving first, first move advantage, or first mover advantage, all those basic principles of self-defense and fighting and the rap fighting stuff, which is really good stuff. Um, the question I think Troy was talking about was uh, groups. What happens when groups? And this is something that, that I've been turned on to lately that some people have been sending me where in certain parts of the country or world, there might be a whole group of people holding you and smashing you with the other hand and they just swarm, and it's, and it's part of the culture. It's a little bit different depending on where you are, but we will go over that. We'll talk about what to, how to try to survive that, how to try to get out of there. Yeah, and Darius says, slow, smooth, smooth, fast. Thank you. We'll end on that, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much.